Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 16 of the platformer game. And in this video, we will be adding enemies. So we're going to make the game a little more challenging now uh, by adding a mob sprite that we'll have to avoid. Uh, so I'm going to copy some of this stuff from the power up sprite to save a little time. We're going to make a class mob. And this is going to go into the all sprites and the mobs group. We've got our game reference and then we are going to start setting up how we want the mob to behave. Now first of all what we want the sprite or the mob to look like. There's a bunch of different um, or a few different mob types in the sprite sheet if we go over and look at it, you know, there's uh, the little red guy with the spike on his head. There's a little uh, springy guy. There's a flying guy and there's the little propeller guy. And so I thought I would take the uh, propeller guy and we're going to use him. And what we're going to want to do is um, I want him to, when he flies across the screen, to not just go in a boring straight line, but kind of look like he's bouncing a little bit, so he's kind of hovering, you know, a little hovering effect. So we're going to switch between these two different sprites where his feet are going in the opposite direction. So this is when he's flying upwards, and this is when he's dropping downwards. Okay, and then, uh, so we'll just alternate between those as he bounces across the screen. And if you look at your XML file, you can find him here. It's the Flyman and we're going to want the fly and the jump uh, frames. So what we're going to do is we're going to call that, um, we're going to load those two different images. And actually, I already copied and pasted all those numbers to save a little time. <clears throat> there we go. We're going to use the image up and the image down. So the image for when he's moving up and the image for when he's moving down. And we'll set our image to start with just to image up. Doesn't really matter. We'll get our rect. And then we need to figure out where to spawn him. Now, I want the mobs to sometimes spawn on the left and come across this way, and sometimes spawn on the right and come across this way. So, so they should start off the screen on one of the sides. So we're just going to pick a random location between minus 100, which would be off the screen to the left, and width, oops, width plus 100, which would be off the screen to the right. Then we're going to pick a random speed so that sometimes they'll be moving fast and sometimes slow. And that's just going to be between 1 and 4. Now that's a positive number, so that means it'll move to the right, and that's fine if we start it out off to the left. But if our if our sprite spawned off the screen to the right, then I just want those uh, to be negative, so that the velocity will move it to the right. Then we can pick uh, where we want it to spawn in the y direction, and that's just going to be, I want it to be somewhere in the top half of the screen. So top half, not down in the bottom half. Okay, and then our self.vy is going to be zero. And we, what we want to do is we want our vy, so the, the vx will be constant, so it'll move across the screen at a constant speed, but the vy is going to alternate between moving upwards and moving downwards, and then moving upwards, and then moving downwards. But I don't want it to be very jerky. I want it to be smooth. So what we want to use is some acceleration where we speed up to the top and slow down, and then speed down towards the bottom and slow down. So that we make a nice curve. So I'm going to make a set of variable called dy for that. And that's going to be uh, 1 half. OK. So our update. Well, our x speed is constant, so we can just move in the x direction. But now we need to do the y direction. So we're going to take our vy 
and we're going to add the dy to it, right? So like in the first frame, our vy is zero, so we wouldn't move at all if we were if it was just zero. But we're going to add 0.5 to it, so then we'll move it 0.5. Next frame, we'll be moving our vy. We'll get another 0.5 added to it. It'll be one. Then it'll be 1.5, etc. So we're going to keep making our vy bigger, which would accelerate us upward. But at a certain point, we want that to stop and turn around. So, so what we're going to do is say if the vy gets to be greater than three or less than minus three, then I want my dy just to uh, reverse. So times equals negative one. Okay. So that way we'll have that nice smooth curve. Now. So now we figured out how to move. Now we need to figure out which image to use. Do we do we use the up one or the down one? Well, first, first we're going to track where our center is because these two sprites, if you notice, are slightly different sizes, just a few pixels, but enough that it would be could introduce a little bit of uh, jerkiness. So we're going to track where the center of our sprite is, and if our dy is less than zero then we're moving upwards. So we're going to use the uh, we're going to use the up image. Otherwise, we'll use the down image. We get our new rect from that based on that image. We set our center equal to the old uh, center, or the same center, so it stays the same. And then we can finally move our y by whatever our vy is. And now we'll have our nice smooth movement. And then the last thing we need to do is, if it's moved all the way off the screen, come all the way across, we need to kill it. So if the left is greater than width plus 100, or the right is less than negative 100. So if it's moved all the way off the screen, then we'll uh, delete. Okay, so that'll be our class mob. Now we just need to make it start spawning. So we'll go over to our main, and we need to do a couple of things. We need to uh, we need to make a mobs group, and then we need to decide how often are we going to spawn mobs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a setting in here for mob frequency, and I'm going to put 5,000, that's milliseconds, so 5 seconds as kind of the baseline. That's going to be the average time between each mob spawning, and we'll use some randomness to vary it, but that will be how frequently they spawn. So now in our game loop, in our updates uh, section, we can decide whether we want to uh, spawn a mob or not. So spawn a mob question mark. So we need to figure out what time it is now. Oh, right, and then I also forgot we're going to need our mob timer. And that's just going to be um, keeping track of when the last time we spawned one so we know whether it's time to spawn one again. All right, so we get what time it is now. Get ticks. And if now minus mob timer is greater than. 5,000. Now, if I just did that, it would they would spawn every 5,000 milliseconds exactly, every five seconds exactly. But we're going to vary that a little bit. Now, I could do something like this, right? If I let's say I wanted it to be, to be between four and six seconds, I could do that, right? Pick a random number between here, and then sometimes it would be as low as 4,000, sometimes it would be as high as 6,000. But the problem is there's there's way too many increments in here. This is 2,000 integers all the way across this range. 
Sometimes it'll be 837, sometimes it'll be 834, and what difference does it make if it's two milliseconds different? Um, instead, what we can do is just do some discrete values, just to vary it some, and I'm going to put minus 1,000, minus 500, 0, 500, and 1,000. So that way we have either either four seconds, four and a half seconds, five seconds, five and a half seconds, or six seconds. And if that happens, then we will spawn a mob. So we'll set the mob timer to now, and we will spawn a mob. Oops, and the mob, it wants a plat. That's not right. I think I left something when I copied and pasted. I did. Don't want that in there. Okay, so let's see how this looks so far. Oh, there's a mob. Okay. So I'm going across. Oh, there's another one. So we should see they're all going to the right at the moment. We should see one going in the other direction sooner or later. There's one. Yeah, so you can see we've got the animation is working. It looks like it's bouncing up and down. Um, we've got different speeds and now this might seem a little too frequent to you like there's a lot of mobs to navigate between but remember once we start moving they're going to be dropping off the bottom of the screen as we go past them which reminds me of something we do have to take into account you guys see that he's not he looks like he's chasing us because we are not when we scroll the screen, we are not scrolling the screen to, um, or we're not moving the mobs along with the camera. So they are not moving the way the rest of the things on the screen are. So here on the, when we reach the top quarter of the screen, I'm just going to do the same thing I'm doing with the platforms with the mobs. So I'm going to say for mob in mobs Oops, mobs we just want to move them downwards and that should let us zoom right past them get one. there we go see we can sort of leave him behind as we get past him of course there's no collisions happening yet so that doesn't really matter uh, but I think that's a pretty good start for how we want our mobs to behave and we can do the collisions. Although there is one other thing. There we go. See how the mob goes behind the sprite sometimes and sometimes in front of it? Well, that has to do with that draw order problem again. If you remember, we went down to our... In order to fix that with our player, we went down here to our draw section and we are blitting the player after drawing all the sprites so we make sure it's always on top. And that's fine if you just have one, one thing you want to draw. But now we've got the mobs too. Um, it could start to get messy. We're going to have to blit all our different sprites separately. So Pygame has a good solution for that. And the solution is, if we go over here, when we make our sprite, our all sprites group, we're going to use a different type of group called layered updates. And this sprite group type allows you to specify what order you want things drawn in by giving each sprite a layer uh, value, a, a number for what layer it is, the lower layers will get drawn first. So we just need to assign a layer to each of the sprites and they will all get drawn in the right order. So we'll go over here and we'll do that here too. Okay, so we're going to set the player layer and I'm going to make that two. I'm going to set the platform layer to one. We can set the pow layer and that can be one as well. They're right on top of the platforms and the mob layer and we'll put the mobs on the same layer as the player since they're going to run into each other. We're not going to see them overlap anyway. 
Okay, so now we have these layers defined. Then in our sprites, we can tell our sprites uh, what layer we want them to be on. And there's two different ways you can do that. You can do that when you when you add them to the group, which remember we're not doing that anymore. We got rid of the all sprites dot add. You can put the parameter in there and say layer equals two or whatever. But since we're spawning the the sprites with all their properties in the sprite definition, it makes sense to put that in here. So we just need to say we need to give it a, another property call, and we need to do it again. We need to do it before the sprite in it, and it needs to be called underscore layer. Okay, and so this is going to be the player layer on the player and on the platform. We're going to set the underscore layer to uh, platform, oop, not platform list, platform layer. And we're going to set the POWs to POW layer. And we're going to set the mobs to mob layer. OK. So let's take a look. And then, oh, and then down here in our draw, uh, we don't need this line anymore. We don't need to blit this. Oops, I duplicated it instead of deleting it. Um, okay, so we're just going to draw all sprites, and the all sprites group will now take care of all the layers. So let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, so see the can see the mob in front of the platforms. The player is still the player is still always in front of the platforms. And the player and the and the mobs could be either cuz they're on the same layer, but that's okay cuz we're going to do collisions in a second. But you can see when you've got a lot of different sprites sprites on the screen, the layered um, the layered drawing is a lot easier to do with that layered updates sprite group. All right, and already we're getting kind of long, so we're going to do a quick uh, collision here. We're just going to say um, we're just going to use our usual um, pygame dot sprite. Uh, sprite collide function between the player and the mobs and it doesn't really matter whether we put true or false uh, because if we hit the mob playing equals false game over all right so let's just make sure we see how that works and then we can uh, end this video Okay, there we go. Now, there is going to be one thing you'll notice. Oh, a nice string of boosts there. Okay, so let's see if this will... Not quite. I'm trying to get a collision to happen close by. Just so you guys can see. There we go. Ah, do you see that collision? So because we're using the rectangles, you might remember from our uh, shmup game that uh, it can really be bad if the player thinks that they dodged something, um, but they die anyway just because the rectangles overlap. So that doesn't look good at all. And so in the next video, we'll improve the collisions by using something called Pixel Perfect Collision. So as always, please like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos and help other people find them. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the discussion area below. And I will see you all in the next video.